I'm Patrick Byers, Field Specialist in Horticulture with University of Missouri Extension. Thank you for joining our video series, Practical Advice for Successful Farmers. Today the subject is establishing a berry farm, and we are here at the Fruit Training Facility in Southwest Missouri. So the process of establishing a berry farm starts way before you put that first plant into the ground. The first step is to figure out if the site is even going to work from the standpoint of your plants. At our site here in southwest Missouri, we're located in an area that has good resident population and also has a number of opportunities for marketing berries. So that's the first step, figure out where your markets are going to be. Our collaborating farmer already sells vegetables at several farmers markets in the area and, and he's convinced that adding berries to his offerings will be well received at these farmers markets. The next thing to think about is the general layout of the site. First of all, does the site have some elevation relative to the surrounding land? And in our case, we're blessed having a site that is a bit higher than surrounding ground, so we expect fewer problems with spring frost damage on the blossoms of our berry plants, and also, hopefully, fewer disease issues during the growing season because high sites have better air movement. The next thing to think about is water. Berry crops require water for irrigation and for other purposes, and it's important to have an adequate supply of clean water. At the farm, we have a well that produces water that is regularly tested for microbial safety, and there's plenty of water produced here to, to meet the needs of an expansion into berry crops, so we're happy with that. The next thing to think about is the soil. Is the soil going to be suitable for berry crops? And it's important to figure this out, again, well before you order the plants and put them into the ground. So at least six months, and better 12 months, test the soil. Get a feel for what the soil characteristics are at the starting point and figure out if you need to add any soil amendments. One of the crops that we're going to plant here is blueberries. And in most cases in Missouri, blueberry soils have to be amended to make them suitable for uh, production of the crop. And without a soil test, you have no clue as to what might need to be done with the soil. So at least six months and better 12 months, test the soil. And we did indeed test the soil here at our site. Thankfully, the soil was suitable for three of our crops for strawberries, for elderberries, and for blackberries. The blueberry portion did indeed need to be amended, and we'll talk more about that here in a moment. So, the next thing to think about is internal soil drainage. And any site that has problems with internal soil drainage is going to have issues with survival and long-term profitability of berry plantings. At our site here, we did have some concerns with it. So we decided that we were going to plant our berry crops on raised ridges or berms. And in fact, that is a pretty common practice here in Missouri. So again, all of these things we considered, all of them looked positive, and we felt that we were ready to move ahead with establishing our berry plantings. Blueberries are a crop that can have good profit potential for farmers here in Missouri. And at our demonstration farm, we decided to plant a planting of blueberries, and that's what we see here. Now, the uh, process in establishing blueberries, first of all, we determined that the site would need to be amended based upon our soil test. And so six months before planting, we amended the soil with pelletized sulfur. And this was designed to lower the soil pH into the range that would be suitable for blueberries. The next thing we considered was internal soil drainage. And again, knowing that we might have some issues at this site, we created the berms that you see here. And these berms were created with a bed shaper pulled behind a tractor. The next thing to think about is irrigation. Irrigation is necessary for blueberry production here in Missouri. And so we placed an irrigation system on the planting with a drip line down each row. And we used semi-rigid black plastic inline drip tape. And this tape is, is a long-term part of the planting. It should give us at least eight to 10 years of life. And with the blueberries, we opted to use an inline drip emitter spacing of 24 inches. And again, these were placed down the row as you see here. We also made provision for injection of fertilizers into the drip irrigation stream. And so we set up our control area for the drip system with that in mind. The next thing to think about is the the um, management of weeds. And weeds are a serious issue in all berries, but particularly in blueberries. And historically, blueberry farmers have mulched their plantings with an organic mulch. We opted to use a new technology utilizing a woven weed barrier fabric. And that's what you see here. This is a plastic fabric that should, again, give us at least eight to 10 years of life. And it will do an excellent job of controlling weeds, certainly between the plants, 
We may have to do some weeding in the planting hole itself, but that's going to make weed management much easier than if we had to manage the whole area under the bushes. Now, once we decided we were going to go that route, we laid the weed barrier fabric out and then we burned a hole where each plant was going to go using a butane torch and a template. Now, standard spacing on blueberries here in Missouri is four feet between plants. In our case, that's what we used, and then 10 to 12 feet between the rows. In our case, we used 12 feet. But the spacing at your particular site may vary somewhat from that. The next thing to think about was where were our plants going to come from? Now, it's important to order nursery stock well in advance of planting. Our blueberries went into the ground in October, and we ordered our plants the previous spring. Early ordering gives you the best choice of cultivars and also the best chance of getting the plants delivered when you need them. So we ordered our plants. We have two cultivars in here. We have Duke and we have Legacy to give us an early season cultivar and a later season cultivar. Okay, once the berms were laid and the drip irrigation line was in place, then we amended the soil with organic matter. Blueberries benefit from at least 3% and 5% is better organic matter on the soil test report. Our site was a bit low, so we placed two inches of rotted sawdust down the row and we incorporated that into the bed. Okay, the next step was to place the weed barrier fabric over the bed. We placed it over the bed and then we buried the edges to hold it in place. Now we were ready to plant. And so we organized a crew and we planted our blueberries. Each plant received two gallons of moist peat moss mixed into the soil that we placed back around the roots of the plant. This would give the plants a, an organically amended area near the roots that will promote good root growth early on. We knocked the plants out of their pots and then using our fingers we pulled the root balls apart. Again by doing this we're going to encourage the movement of roots away from the original root ball and out into the soil. The other thing that we were very careful about is planting depth. It's important with blueberries to not plant them too deep. Even an inch too deep will have serious consequences in survival of the plants. So if we look down the row, we can notice that the plants are at the same level in our planting here as they were growing in their nursery pots. So we were very careful about that. Once the plants were in the ground, then we turned on the irrigation system, watered them in, and we got a good establishment of our blueberry planting. So to summarize establishing a blueberry planting, first of all, the soil test is critically important. It will guide you as far as the amendments that may be needed at the blueberry site to make the soil suitable. Secondly, consider soil drainage. Blueberries are very sensitive to soils that stay wet for too long. So consider a raised bed. Third, source your plants early. Make sure that you get your orders in well in advance of the planting date. Prepare the site, have it ready to go when those plants arrive. Remember that you need to provide for good soil drainage. A raised bed does that. You need to think about weed control. Weed barrier fabric does a good job of that. You need to be able to water. Your irrigation system does a good job of that. On planting day, make sure that you've got a good crew. Pull the root balls apart before you plant. Mix peat moss into the soil that you put back around the plants and don't plant the plants too deep. Water them in well and you've got your planting established. Elderberries are a new berry crop for Missouri, but we've seen widespread interest in growing elderberries, and it's a crop that is well suited for growing here in Missouri. The first step in considering an elderberry planting is to think about the layout of the planting and answer some basic questions. First of all, are you going to start your planting from cuttings or from nursery plants? Secondly, are you going to use raised beds? In general, raised beds offer many advantages for elderberry farmers in Missouri. So once you've answered those two questions, it's time to start thinking about the establishment process. Now, again, start early, at least six to 12 months before planting the plants. If you're going to plant cuttings, source your cuttings early on. Cuttings are typically collected in January and then placed in the planting in February, March, or April. So at least six months in advance, order your cuttings. If you're going to plant nursery plants, they tend to be in shorter supply. So order those at least six months and perhaps even 12 months earlier so the nursery has a chance to grow those plants for you. If you decide to use raised beds, make the raised beds in advance of planting. Typically two or three months is a good time to raise the beds. Think about irrigation. 
elderberries require irrigation for best production. And in our planting here, we opted to use an inline drip system. With this system, it's a semi-rigid black plastic pipe and the emitters are molded in during the manufacturing process. And in the case of our system, we have emitters at 18 inch spacings for elderberries. The next thing to think about is, is the layout of the planting. How far apart do you want to space the plants? How far apart do you want to space the rows? In our planting, we opted to space the plants four feet apart, but they can certainly be planted closer than that. And especially with the use of cuttings, it's an inexpensive plant material source, and you can certainly plant them closer than four foot. And our rows are 12 foot apart here. We determined that it would be a good practice to plant these on raised beds, knowing that we might have some internal soil moisture issues here at the fruit demonstration farm. So we make raised beds using a bed shaper. And this was done about, oh, maybe three months or so before planting in, in the late winter. We then opted to use in this planting a woven landscape fabric to help control weeds. And this material is, has a long-term life. It should give us at least eight to ten years of life. We laid the fabric down the rows and then using a template and a butane torch we burned a hole in the fabric where we were interested in putting each plant. We then laid the irrigation lines down the row, placed the fabric over the raised bed, and buried the edges. We're now ready to stick the cuttings. Now elderberry cuttings are collected in January and typically an elderberry cutting, of course it's dormant at this point, but typically an elderberry cutting is two, three, or four nodes long and those cuttings are collected from the shoots that grew the previous growing season. So once we had the cuttings in hand we came through and we put two cuttings per planting hole. Now that's perhaps a, a bit excessive but we wanted to be sure that we had a good stand establishment. Usual rooting from cuttings is going to be somewhere around 80 to 85 percent. So one cutting per hole, you're going to have some skips that will have to be filled back in later on. With two cuttings per hole, we had almost 100 percent stand in the establishment of these elderberry plants. We could have started with, with nursery plants and obviously had a full stand that way as well, but nursery plants are considerably more expensive than cuttings. And cuttings root well and grow nearly as fast during the initial growing season as nursery plants do. Once the cuttings were in place, we then turned the irrigation system on and watered them in well, and we had our elderberry planting established. So to summarize establishing elderberries, first of all, again, source your plant material early. Whether you choose to use cuttings or nursery plants, make sure that you get your order in early. Secondly, consider raised beds. Plants have responded well to growing on raised beds here in Missouri, and especially if there's concern about soil moisture, internal drainage, at your site, consider a raised bed. Consider how you're going to manage weeds. The weed barrier fabric does a nice job of controlling weeds, especially when the planting is young. Think about irrigation. Elderberries have to be irrigated, so source your irrigation supplies, get your planting ready, and then get the planting ready for, for planting. Typically, if cuttings are stuck sometime in early spring, so prepare the planting the previous fall by raising the bed, placing the irrigation line in place, putting the landscape fabric in place, and sourcing your plant material. Stick your cuttings in, in early spring, plant your nursery plants if you go that route, and your planting will be established. Our blackberry planting at the Fruit Learning Farm is a little bit different than a typical blackberry planting in Missouri. And what I really wanted to stress here is the use of the RCA or rotating cross-arm trellis which in combination with the right blackberry varieties can be a very productive way to grow high quality fruit and also a great way to manage some of the risks that are inherent in blackberry production. So let's talk about this system and we'll start with the blackberry trellis. This system is unique in that you can change the orientation of the blackberry plant based upon the season. And in our planting at the moment, the plants are laying flat to the ground. They're covered with floating row covers to protect them from winter cold. This is one way to help reduce the risk of winter damage on blackberries. This system also allows you to bring the canopy back up in the late spring and summer so that you can produce the berries in the shade of the trellis. And having the berries on the shady side of the row reduces issues related to high temperature or solar damage to the berries. We can also place the berries in a very uniform plane on the plant so that they're very efficient to harvest. Another thing that this system does is it improves berry quality and productivity. And we can see increases of at least 20 to 30 percent in productivity by using this system 
compared to a conventional two-wire or a divided canopy system. This system also allows you to separate the primocane part of the plant from the floricane part of the plant. And then focus efforts such as spotted wing drosophila management on the floricane part of the plant, which is the fruiting arm of the trellis. So again, an excellent way to grow blackberries. So with that in mind, we decided we were going to use the rotating cross-arm trellis with our blackberry planting here at the fruit production facility. First of all, in establishing this planting, the things that we've mentioned before with other fruit crops, it's important to source your plant material early. With blackberries, we decided to use tissue culture plugs, and we ordered our plugs six months before they we needed them for planting. Secondly, it's important to source the materials for your trellis. Now, this trellis design, you can certainly buy a package, but you can also manufacture the components yourself, but allow yourself plenty of time to manufacture the components and then to install the trellis, and this needs to be done well before planting the plants. So first of all, we determined at our site because we have some issues with internal soil drainage, we were going to plant the blackberries on raised beds. So the first thing we did, of course, was to raise the bed using a bed shaper. We then installed the end brace posts. At either end of the row, we stretched a line down the length of the row, and then using that line, we positioned our cross-arm assemblies. And in this planting, the cross-arm assemblies are 30 feet apart. Now, they can be uh, closer than that, and, and uh, that might be something to consider, but at our planting, they're about 30 feet apart. We then stretched all of the wire that we needed and anchored the wire to the brace posts at the end and our trellis was then in place. The next step was to think about irrigation. Now, blackberries, as are the other fruit crops, the other berry crops grown in Missouri, really benefit from irrigation. Perhaps not as critical as with crops like blueberries or strawberries, but nonetheless, you wanna be sure that you have provision for irrigation with a blackberry crop. We decided to use an inline trickle system this uses semi-rigid black plastic line with the emitters molded in during the manufacturing process. And in the case of the blackberries, we used uh, a system that has emitters every 18 inches. And so we stretched the emitters down the line. We also made provision at our control area to allow for injection of fertilizers into our irrigation water because we wanted to be able to utilize that tool in fertilizing the blackberries. Okay, so now we have the trellis in place, we have the raised bed in place, we have the drip line in place. Now we need to think about weed control. And weed control is a critical issue with berry crops. We decided to use a woven landscape barrier fabric. And this material, again, is, is a plastic material woven. It has an expected life of eight to 10 years. It should do a good job of controlling weeds in our RCA trellis blackberry planting. Next thing to think about is to have all of this ready well in advance of planting. Our blackberries were planted in May. And so we had all of our, our planting in place, ready to go in mid-April. Now, the planting stock that we used were tissue culture plug plants. And these are small plants. They're actively growing when they arrive. You don't really want to plant those before frost risk has passed. So we opted to plant in early May. These plants are small when they arrive, but they take off and grow like gangbusters. And we were very pleased with their performance. Uh, we planted the plants every five feet. That's the standard spacing for the RCA trellis. And our rows are 12 feet apart. Again, a, a standard spacing for an RCA trellis blackberry planting. Once the plants were in the ground, then we watered them in with the drip irrigation system. And those were the steps we went through to establish the blackberry planting. To summarize establishing a blackberry planting, you know, start the process early. Give yourself plenty of time to get the job done. Allow at least six months, and 12 months is perhaps even better. First of all, source your planting stock. Make sure you can get the cultivars you want and they can be delivered when you want them. Blackberries are typically planted in the spring, so start your process the summer, or at least the fall at the latest, before you plan to plant. Decide on your trellis system. If you're going to use an RCA trellis, that's a great idea, but there are other designs as well. Create the raised beds to plant the plants on. Install the trellis. Consider the irrigation system you're going to use. Consider weed management for the young planting. Again, if you choose to use weed barrier fabric, burn the holes, place the fabric over the row, anchor the edges. Then you're ready to go. Source your plants, have them delivered sometime in May, and plant the plants. And once they're in the ground, turn on the irrigation, water them in, and your blackberry planting is established. In recent years, the trend in Missouri for strawberry production is shifting to annual production systems. Now, these could be strawberries grown in the open field, and that's 
commonly done in Missouri, but there's also interest in growing strawberries under protected structures, such as a high tunnel. Here at the fruit demonstration farm, we decided to grow strawberries in a high tunnel to demonstrate the use of this technology in producing the strawberry crop. So, talking a bit about establishing strawberries in a high tunnel. Well, first of all, of course, you need to have the structure in place. And so the first step in establishing this planning was to build the high tunnel. And we did that. This is a standard high tunnel, 30 feet wide, 72 feet long. There's enough room in here for five or six rows of strawberries. The management of the environment in here is passive. It's based upon the opening and closing of side vents and the vents on the ends of the structure. So first step is to construct the tunnel. The second step is to take a look at the soil within the tunnel. This is going to be the soil you'll be working with for the strawberry crop. So a soil test is helpful, but recognize that with annual strawberries, frequently we're providing the majority of the plant's nutrient needs in the way we fertilize the plants. But it is important to have a good soil at the base. The next thing to think about is soil drainage. The usual way of a growing annual strawberries is on a raised bed. And if there's any question at all about soil drainage, this is the approach that should be used. Another thing to consider with annual strawberries is weed management. You know, weeds obviously can be a serious issue with strawberries. And with annual production systems, it's standard to use a plastic film as a mulch over the raised bed. So with those thoughts in mind, let's talk about how we established our planting here at the fruit demonstration farm. First step, of course, was to determine what cultivars we were going to grow. And we decided to grow the standard cultivar, which is Chandler and we decided to grow it in this high tunnel with five rows. Now again, we probably could have squeezed in an additional row, but five rows was a good spacing. So the first step is to test the soil and amend it if necessary with phosphorus, potassium, calcium, and magnesium. We're blessed here at the farm with the soil that is in pretty good shape as it sits from the standpoint of soil pH and then various nutrients that I just mentioned. So we didn't have to apply any amendments related to soil pH modification or nutrient modification. Okay, first step is to think about the pre-plant application of nitrogen fertilizer. Strawberries are heavy nitrogen feeders and it's important that we provide enough. About a third of that need is put down as a pre-plant application, which is what we did here at this soil. The next step was to raise the beds and the raised beds were created using a bed shaper. These plants have to be irrigated, obviously in a high tunnel environment, it's the farmer's responsibility to provide the moisture needed to grow the crop. So we have a drip tape system on the strawberries. Now this is an annual crop. This is a fairly light weight drip system that's intended for a single use. With annual strawberries, they'll be planted in the fall. They'll be grown for one harvest the next spring, and then the plants are discarded and something else is planted in that bed. So all of this begins in summer. We test the soil, we apply amendments as needed, and then we raise the beds typically in August to get ready for planting. The bed shaper in a single pass will create the bed, it will lay the drip irrigation line, and will also lay the plastic film mulch over the row and bury the edges. And so that was done, we were now ready to go. The best planting date for annual strawberries in Missouri is in early September. And so we sourced our plants for delivery. Now again, it's important to order plants well in advance of when you need them, First of all, so that you can get the cultivars you're interested in, but critically important to get those plants in time for that early September planting date. Even a few weeks delay in planting strawberries here in Missouri can lead to reductions in crop the next year. So it's really important to source those plants early so that you can have them in place in hand when it's time to plant. Now, in a larger scale planting, we would have planted the plants using a water wheel transplanter which automatically creates the holes and you can drop the plants in then with the transplanter. In our case, this is a fairly small planting, so we opted to plant these by hand. We created the holes and then we planted our plug plants. Now plug plants, it's a small actively growing strawberry plant that was generated from a runner tip that summer. And so they arrive healthy and vigorous. You plant them in the ground 
and they begin to take off and grow. Now, we have some pre-plant nutrition present, but it's important to keep these plants growing in the fall because you have to generate a sizable plant moving into the dormant season. And this is done by, first of all, fertilizing through the drip line, fertigation, that's very helpful, and then using floating row covers, which are covers made of polypropylene. And these are placed over the plants during cold snaps, again, to keep them from going dormant, to keep them growing. And then there may be a few other jobs that need to be done in the fall, such as the removal of runners. But basically, those are the steps you'll go through in establishing an annual high tunnel strawberry planting. So in summary, when establishing annual strawberries in a high tunnel, the first step is to make sure the high tunnel is in good condition, that vents are operational, all the infrastructure is in place. Secondly, test the soil. Get a feel for whether you need to add any amendments to modify soil pH or perhaps to apply the nutrients needed in the soil. Next step is to source your plants. Source your plants early. Make sure that you arrange for the optimum delivery day, which in Missouri is in early September. Create the raised bed environment where the plants are going to grow. Using a bed shaper, raise the bed, place the drip irrigation line, place the plastic film mulch. The next step is when the plants arrive, get those plants in the ground as soon as you can. Get them in the ground, get them established, start your fertigation program to get those plants off to a good start. Thank you for joining us in this video focused on establishing a berry planting. For more information on establishing a berry planting or other information related to specialty crops, visit the WebCityFarmersMarket.com website. This project is made possible with generous support from the Missouri Department of Agriculture Specialty Crop Block Grant Program and is a partnership among University of Missouri Extension, Lincoln University Cooperative Extension, Web City Farmers Market, and Cooperating Farmer Laiku League.